Alright guys, um, yeah, I have to do this video again because, uh, in the last one I didn't have audio, so, uh, yeah, um, yeah, so, um, uh, it's Thursday, and I have to delete the video from Wednesday, but it's technically still daily upload week, I'm just uploading two videos today, they're kinda late, cause I had to be caught up into stuff, it's... It's the last court, uh, it's the last, um, I don't know how to say it, but it's like a very special day for school. I have to get all my grades in. Yeah. Um. Uh. So, yeah. Uh, let's go. Alright. Uh, this video shows the complete future of our solar system based on scientific research. And the laws of the universe, the more distant the time from today, the less certain we are about the events. Also, the events vary depending on the source. Okay, uh, if you guys hear me yawning a little bit, it's uh, <clears throat> eight, uh, almost 9 o'clock. Actually, let me check my phone here. 8.30, so yeah. Come on. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, already some news. Uh, five million. What? Five million. Oh, years from now, the Lyapunov of time begins as the planet's orbits become impossible to predict. Oh. All right. Uh, four million years from now, Phobos becomes uh disintegrated by Mars. My Mars's gravity as the orbit reaches Mars Mars's Roche limit, and uh, I did see Mars had like a little ring thing for it. So let's track down all the planets. So we have Mercury right here. Uh, I'm assuming it's like that little orbit where my mouse is. We got Venus here, which is the orange orbit right here where my mouse is. We got Earth here, which is the blue orbit where my mouth my where my mouth ah, where my mouse is. We got the Sun, which is not visible. Uh, I think because it's, its planets are pretty far out. We got Mars, which is the red orbit right here. And I like how they just give us like this, the inner solar system right here. We got Jupiter, which is like right there where my mouse is. Saturn, right there where my mouse is. Uranus, right there where my mouse is. Neptune, right there where, where his mouse is. And Planet 9, where's Planet... Oh, it's right here. Oh, okay. Yeah, alright, so Mercury point... Uh, 0 0.39 AU, Venus 0.72 AU, Earth 1 AU, Mars 1.52 AU, Jupiter 5.20 AU, Saturn 9.58 AU, Uranus 9.22 AU, uh, <clears throat> uh, Neptune 30.11 30 AU, Planet 9 600, 601.20 AU, that's really far out. And then the sun. Zero AU. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Come on. As its icy particles crash into Saturn's moons and crash into Saturn itself, uh, they get, as well as getting thrown out of the system, Saturn's rings disappear. So basically, uh, you're telling me that Saturn's rings will collide with its moons and Saturn, or they just get thrown out of Saturn completely and disappear. Okay. Uh, the next mass extinction hap- oh, no, of course. Alright. Due to the moon's tidal effects, days become 25 hours long. The last possible first year of the Lyapunov time begins. This takes place and the solar system's chaotic orbits become unpredictable. Earth's next uh, supercontinent Pangea Proxima forms. Oh yeah, you kind of changed the thing there. I also like how you got rid of Saturn's uh, ring system. And uh, let's go. As enough rock, molten rock, accumulates in Venus's mantle, the entire surf- wall. Does it bur- oh, it bursts out temperature! Ooh. Due to the moon's orbital recession, it would have moved so far away that total solar eclipses are impossible. Due to the sun's increasing luminosity, weathering increased 
removing the CO2 required for C3 photosynthesis, causing 99% of all plants to die. Well, that's great. Yeah, no. That's not great. I like this music. It's like... Dun, 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 dun. Alright, uh, anyway. Due to the lack of plants needed for cellular respiration, animals start to die off. Large animals will die first, followed up by ocean and underground vertebrates, and eventually invertebrates. Cool. Oh, you can even see Planet Nine's uh, temperature kind of rising there. You know that the sun is growing. CO2 levels have fallen to the point where C4 photosynthesis becomes impossible, and all plant life dies, and animals follow soon after. That's great! Oh, now Earth's a sad molten rock. Huh. Glorious. All complex life has gone extinct by this point, as the average temperature on Earth is now 45 degrees Celsius, and water remains only on polar regions. And the remaining single-cell organisms uh, will survive there. Not for long, though, since that Earth's temperature is uh, 46 degrees Fahrenheit Celsius. That's pretty bad. As a result of ocean evaporation and mantle cooling, plate tectonics stop completely. Wait, mantle cooling? Wait, ocean evaporation? Huh, well, I'm not sure how ocean evaporation would affect it, but mantle cooling, yeah, I think I know why mantle cooling would stop tectonic plates, but I'm not sure about ocean evaporation. Anyway. I also want to point out here, uh, like, I like how the orbits kind of move, you see, get me? Like, they're kind of moving. Like, Mar oh, Mercury's is going crazy. After conditions become too hostile, the last Eucharoid dies. Oh, Earth's temperature. Mars has water! Ooh! It's pretty cool, no other changes. As the sun's luminosity increases, yeah, Mars has water now. A uh, Mars equator becomes uh, warm enough for liquid water. But you need an atmosphere to keep that water down. Oh, and their temperature starts to rise too. That's pretty cool, man. As Mars continues to warm up, its appearance starts to more resemble Earth in 2020. Uh, then it's toy. Ugh. Then it, what it looks like right now. So it starts to look more like Earth, except that it's red a little bit there. As Earth's core solidifies, it loses its magnetic field, and life extinction rate drastically increases due to incoming. Ultra ultraviolet radiation. Oh, so like CO2 emissions? Whoa! Whoa! That's... Oh. That's bad, Earth. Ebus. I really like this music. As Earth's temperature increases... As t Earth's temperature approaches 150 degrees, de degrees, there's a 95% chance that all life is ex that all lives are extinct by now, even prokaryotes. I'm not even sure what these things are, but all the planets are increasing in temperature as the moon drifts far enough away from Earth. Earth's rotation becomes chaotic due to the lack of moon to stabilize it. That's great. But why is the moon going uh, drifting far away from Earth? Is it like its own gravitational pull is going against the Earth or something? I'm not sure. Uh, there's a 1% chance that Jupiter has either ejected Mercury from the solar system or made it collide with the other planets. Oh, their, their panel here. I saw, like, a little change, and I'm not sure if it faded or anything, because, uh, I'm not sure if Mercury's, like, little panel thing faded, like, 
just a little bit, but it, I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, a runaway greenhouse effect, uh, effect occurs on Earth, giving it an even more hostile environment than Venus today, as Earth has vastly more CO2 deposits. But I, but I thought you said they were out of CO2, or were they running low on CO1? What? Um... I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but it's way worse than Venus. Especially since, yeah, they're in the thousands degrees Celsius. Triton, Neptune's only larger moon, has fallen too close to Neptune, causing it to break apart and form a ring system. Wait, did it actually in the little panel thing? I did not. If so, I did not see it. Let's go back to there. We're going to watch Neptune. Oh, yeah, they did have a little ring system. Oh, that's pretty cool. But then it faded away in like five seconds. I like how Uranus's uh, orbit is barely changing. Uh, the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies collide, forever changing the night sky to the planets. Okay. That's crazy. But I actually wonder if it's safe for the Milky Way and the Andromeda to collide. Because you never know when our star might just collide with another star there. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Anything here? Uh, they're increasing. Oh, Mars is out of the negatives. They are 3 degrees Celsius. That's kind of good. That's like 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Not sure. They are rising uh, pretty fast. Alright, the sun is at late, late main sequence, so I'm assuming that its end is going to come to a close here. So, 1.23 uh, suns, and then 1.53 suns for luminosity. Alright. Wait, why'd the orbit stop? Oh. Was that a little glitch or something? I'm not sure. So it sounds so nice. A little song. All right, Jupiter is getting to that point where they're about to leave the 100s. All right, nothing is happening other than the sun's stats. The sun is decreasing in temperature. They are definitely decreasing in temperature. I wonder why that is, sun. Hmm, can you explain that to us? All right, probably in like. Another five million years. The sun is now ten billion years old. Alright, Mars is now getting a little too hot. Or should be getting too hot. As the sun's core runs out of hydrogen, hydrogen fusion moves out into the shell and around the core, making the sun an expanding some giant star. This is when the stun the sun starts to uh what's it? What is it again? Uh red giant. Oh no, that's gonna it's gonna change all these inner planets. Not sure for these outer planets here, but yeah. Oh yeah, you can see the temperatures drastic. Wait, what? Oh, the music changed. Ooh, 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 ooh. Watch the sun down here. They might change color. Watch these stats too. Their mass is gonna go down. The diameter is also moving up. Temperature don't don't going down drastically. Mars is now receiving uh, 20 uh, 90 percent of the sunlight Earth received in 2019, but its albedo means it will have similar temperatures. Uh, however, as the sun's evolution becomes drastic, life will go extinct in Mars in perhaps uh, 500 million years. Yeah, um, sorry Mars, you're not gonna have life for very long. And that five million years is gonna go pat is gonna pass uh, pretty quickly here. Oh, the sun's starting to change now. Oh, that's bad. Uh, the sun's core begins to collapse to enable helium fusion and becomes degenerate. Oh, the mass is gonna go down after this. All right, it is now twice its size. 
All right, is hydrogen fusing red giant as solar winds from the sun's uh, from the sun becomes extremely fierce. Venus's atmosphere is destroyed as the sun's radioactive zone gets consumed by the connective zone. It enters first red giant's phase, and Mars is now uninhabitable. So that means life is completely gone in the solar system. Due to extremely strong solar winds, Earth is at Earth's atmosphere is destroyed. Ooh. And Mars and Mercury don't have an atmosphere. Look at Mercury. They're getting really hot. Uh, Jupiter here is almost out of the negatives. Earth went down in temperature due to their greenhouse effect. Yeah. Uh, Venus passed them. Mercury is the hottest. Not surprised. Note the planet's orbits will stop processing now in order to make the, con the animations not too complex. All right. Ooh. Habitable zone is now at Jupiter. Earth is starting to heat up now. You can see that. Alright. Habitable zone starting to reach Saturn. Oh, you can see the sun down there. Alright. Habitable zone past Saturn. Mars is completely torn up. We can see planet 9 now! Whoa, 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 whoa. So the habitable zone just reached Uranus. Oh, golly. As the sun reaches its peak in its first uh, red giant's phase, phase, its outer layers become extremely diffused, causing them to be flinged off into the void, making the sun less massive, therefore weakening gravity and making the planet's orbits expand. That's good. It's really good. Look at these planets right here. You can see Venus is not really a sphere anymore. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune's profile changed. These four planets, or these three planets, are getting a lot of luminosity. Neptune's kind of just staying the same. Planet 9 is getting more luminosity than it does. And since we don't know much about Planet 9, that's why there's, like, literally no captions. But we are getting luminosity. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Habitable Zone is now in the, uh, Kuiper Belt. As the sun expands into Mercury's orbit, Mercury gets dragged into the sun and destroyed. Wait, what happened to Mercury? Oh, they're gone. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Jupiter's at 360 uh, degrees Celsius, Saturn at 167, Uranus at 62, Neptune at negative uh, 4, and Planet 9 is in the negative 100s. Alright. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus are all in the red spot. Let's try to catch... Oh, uh, I... We had it there. That, uh, Neptune was just in the red zone. Alright. As the sun's core collapses enough to enable helium fusion, its red clump phase begins, and its diameter and luminosity falls. What about its mass? Although Venus will most likely survive this phase, it still has a 20% chance of being dragged into the gravitational um, force by the sun and be eaten. Oh yeah, you can see their fade there. So Venus and Earth are still hot. These all cool down. We can still see Planet 9 a little bit. And the sun is fairly large. As the sun's core runs out of helium, helium fusion moves out into a second shell around the sun core. And the sun's last fusion stage, uh, ASR, or AGB, begins. Basically, uh, this is where the sun has its last breath as a star. So, yeah. Whoa! I like how they didn't even bother putting, like, the habitable zone stuff. Alright, so red zone already passed Jupiter. Habitable zone Saturn. Uranus and Neptune are still fairly cold. Ooh. This is some serious stuff. I'm liking this. Come on. Alright, habitable zone Uranus. We can see planet 9. Habitable zone Neptune. Red, red zone uh, Uranus. Now helium fusion moves out into a shell around the sun's core, and the last fusion stage of the sun begins. The sun swells in size, and gravity then contracts itself. The cycle repeats until all the sun's fuel is exhausted. Thermal pulsations, baby, and the mass. That's when it, when the mass is gone. That's when everything's gonna go bye, oh, bye bye. So every planet here has at least been out. Venus is fading. Ooh. Planet 9 has not been in the negatives. I wonder if they are. Oh, and I like how the planets are trying to move out. Like, they're trying to get away from the sun. Trying to get away from the sun so they can't be eaten. 
The sun reaches its peak uh, peak during the red giant phase, reaching 256 times its current size and expands beyond Earth's current orbit. However, Earth will likely survive due to its ex orbital yeah orbital expansion. That's what all the planets did. That's why uh, Planet Nine is 1,000 AU away. Neptune is 50 50 AU away. Venus Uranus is at Neptune's current orbit. Uh, Saturn is at like Uranus's orbit. Jupiter is at past Saturn's orbit. Mars just went a little bit out, and Earth didn't even try. And Earth didn't even try. Venus, they tried to... Oh, they actually went a little bit out, too. Uh, as, Ven as the sun expands to Venus' widest possible orbit, Venus has a 90% chance of being destroyed by now. Yeah, that's why they're almost faded away. Just after the sun reaches its peak in size, it... Runs out of fuel, creating a planetary nebula, and becomes a white dwarf. Ooh. Ooh, watch the luminosity fall on these planets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can not see Planet 9 anymore. It's invisible. Oh, and the habitable zone shrinks. I like how that just... They're all cold. And then they just cool down. Alright. Neptune starts to fade away. So does Uranus. Saturn... This is sad. Jupiter. Earth. This Earth is darker. Venus. And Mars. Mars is red, so. Yeah. Mass is 0.54 suns. Diameter is one Earth. Basically. And then they start to shrink. That's sad. As the sun cools below the Draper point, it becomes a black dwarf it be forever hidden from our view planet 9 has likely been ejected from the solar system due to an interstellar counter all right neptune's ejected uranus is ejected saturn's ejected and jupiter's ejected leaving only mirth and mars and possibly venus and then they all collide the remaining planets yeah collide the remaining planets have crashed into their sun via gravitational radiation by now, all galaxies have broken apart, removing all objects from the observable universe from the sun's perspective. And the sun doesn't look too good in these stats, either. Their mass will continue to go go down. Or, yeah, stay... No, they, when they went down. By now, even the sun has completely been shredded by a black hole or evaporated entirely via proton decay. The ejected planets will suffer the same plate. fate. Man, I don't like this, how the solar system can't just have a good ending for once. It's so terrible how our future will just end up like this. But hey, it's nature, and you can't fix it. By now, with the sun itself gone along with all the planets, the solar system becomes permanently unchanging, with everything gone and nothing new coming and changing. Frozen landscape of the one dynamic system full of life and hope. The story of the solar system finally comes to an end. Man, I don't like that end of the story. I'm literally about to scream right now because it's such a terrible story. Anyways, anyways guys, I uh, hope you guys like this video of me reacting to uh, Future of the Solar System, A Graphic Journey to the Destruction of the Sun. Uh, make sure this video was made by uh, Mr. Plasma. You should probably go check him out. Maybe go subscribe to him. Actually, you guys should do what I'm doing right now to him and me. So, uh, yeah, thanks uh, thanks for watching and subscribing. And uh, I'll see you all of uh, Stay awesome, and I'll see all of you in the next video. Peace.